You are a warrior of legend, standing upon the shoulders of the great legends of old. You remember well the Dragon Knight's legacy, though all that remains of that is a helmet in your attic as fractured as the memories of great deeds long past. Considering the great battles of yore brings another, less distant memory to mind. You've often heard of what was witnessed in the Battle of Orc Pass. The great Iron Legion commander basking in the glow of destruction, yet far from sated by it. You shake your head of such thoughts, for you have your own journey to pursue, your own legend to forge. You've gathered a decent party of capable adventurers, Hugin the Bard, Kaya the Cleric, and yourself, Jayun the Paladin. All three of you have proven your worth in combat, but are anxious to make progress in your quest to vanquish Infernal Warlock Volkov. That begins today, you decide, starting with Olgrim's Blacksmithy and Forge. This is your first stop in town before continuing your quest for fortune and glory. You didn't expect Olgrim to be working so hard this early in the morning, but the sound of hammer on anvil mixed with dwarvish expletives rings in your ears when you step inside. As you approach the blacksmith, he puts down whatever he was working on and recognizes you. He gestures for you to wait a moment, then disappears around a corner, appearing a moment later with the sabatons you commissioned a few days prior. You comment on the impressive craft dwarf ship of the steel boots, but Olgrim scoffs and spits, grumbling about how it doesn't quite compare to his work on a certain sword of legend he made in his youth. He wonders where it could be sitting now after all these years. You take note of this as a potential lead for a future quest. But for now, you thank Olgrim with your words and your wallet, and move out into the town. Your next stop is a local potion shop filled with various bottled oddities. No adventurer would be caught dead without at least a couple of healing potions in hand. On second thought, perhaps they would. The adventuring life, though extremely lucrative, is just as perilous. Such morbid thoughts encourage some extra little purchases from the potion shelf just to be safe. The shopkeep seems all too eager to further coax a little more money from you, but you leave just in time to avoid buying a bottle of troll soil. You hop from one shop to the next, dreading the possibility of forgetting something. You woke up early in the morning to start your quest earlier, but at this rate you wonder if you might need lunch before you go. The sight of a shopkeep's desk is all too familiar to you now, and your purse is more than light enough to carry any spoils you may find in your adventure. You hope this quest will be enough to make up for all these purchases. At last, with all your errands complete, it's time to finally begin your journey. You reach into a pouch to retrieve four small pendants. These are the Lightbringer's emblems. You were told they would point the way to the treasure and danger you seek. You remember that you don't know which way you're supposed to be going. So you hope these emblems work, or this quest will be over pretty quickly. You arrange them in a pattern on the ground. And after mumbling a few magic words, the glow of the emblems focuses in one particular direction. You pick up the emblems and start leading your party. Your feet carry you to a cave, the hidden entrance of the creepy old castle you've been trying to find. You steal yourself for anything as you meander the darkened caverns by the light of a torch. Suddenly, Kaya senses movement, and the three of you are almost taken by surprise. You're under attack! You face the threat to find... A small, level one imp. Despite its attempts at ferocity, you make easy work of the creature and press onwards. The inside of the castle proper is almost as dark and dank as the cave, though it is far more impressive. You can't help feeling like that imp from earlier as the pillars of the castle halls tower over you such that your torchlight can't even reach the ceiling. Soon, you find another light source, this one an eerie green. You gingerly turn the corner to discover the source, and it's... a cat playing with some kind of glowing relic within a magic circle. As adorable as this is, this is hardly shaping out to be the perilous adventure you spent a lot of time and coin preparing for. Hugin notices the cat has a tag on it that reads, Dander. You decide to not disturb Dander's playtime and move on. 
Down a lengthy set of stairs and through another hall, you notice things have gotten very quiet. Too quiet. No howling of the wind from outside, no chirping of a bird or bat. The purring of the playful cat is far behind you. All you hear is the maddening ringing in your ears in the absence of any other sound or sight. The hair on your neck stands on end before a fire blazes green before you. Above a massive door at the end of this gloomy hall, you see what looks to be some sort of headpiece crowned with green flame, the emblem of eldritch royalty. You are almost overcome with the anticipation of maybe finally finding your mark. You approach the doors and, with some effort, push one of them open enough for you to pass. Inside a room of silent stone, you don't find your foe, but you do find something else. A magical tome floating in an alcove, turning its pages upon pages of forbidden glyphs. The Volcanomicon. You are about to reach forward to grab it when you notice a golden glint in your peripheral vision. You turn to find an ornate treasure chest. The book can wait, you decide. The mystery of the chest's contents has adequately captured your attention for now. You approach it until you are met with a terrible realization. This is a trap! The chest comes alive, revealing its terrible treasure of teeth and tongue. You grab your weapons, because it's time to roll initiative. I hope you came prepared with your best d20. You'll need all the luck you can get to get out of this encounter alive.